Hey guys, welcome back to PNW Guitar. My name is Mason. And today I'm going to show you super easy ways to remember the bare basics of music theory. These are all your fundamentals, all the stuff that you can practice every day, and the stuff that's going to help you become a better guitar player and a songwriter and just a musician in general. What is the first thing that we want to learn? The musical alphabet. What is the musical alphabet? It's the same thing as the alphabet. You know your ABCs, you know the musical alphabet. There's a couple of exceptions there and we'll get into that. The reason that I want to talk about this today is because I spent a long time having absolutely no idea what I was doing. What I was doing was I was actually just memorizing all of the sheet music. So I would be looking at the sheet music and acting like I was reading it, but in reality I was just memorizing everything and playing it all from memory. What I didn't learn is all the fundamentals of music, which I really should have and which I really wanted to. And I found myself a couple of years ago realizing that I was hitting some gaps in my knowledge and also in my abilities, and I really wanted to try and remedy that. So I went and found a teacher, and I did one-on-one -on -one lessons for the last two years with a great teacher. His name's Elliot Vernon at Waxwing Studios on Instagram if anybody's interested. He's a fantastic teacher. What I'm going to do today is teach you what I wanted to learn. And what I wanted to learn, what I basically called practical theory. And this means that I don't want to get too theoretical. Basically anything is up for grabs, but you can't break the rules unless you know the rules. So today, we're gonna learn the basics. So the first thing we wanna learn is the musical alphabet. If you know your ABCs, as a matter of fact, as long as you know A through G, you're good. Then you know the whole musical alphabet with a couple of small exceptions. These are the exceptions I'll show you. I'm gonna start on A. I'm gonna switch to my other camera here so I can show you more closely. And most people know their root A there from the pentatonic scale. We all love it, minor pentatonic, it's fantastic. We'll talk about that later. But for here, we're talking about the A notes. So, the musical scale that we're talking about, the major scale, is this. What is that? It's Do, Re, Mi. It's a very common nursery rhyme all of us learned as kids. Just turns out to be the major scale, which is fantastic because that means it's probably really deep in a lot of our heads. That's exactly what we need. We need to be able to hear that in our mind so that we can play it. The good thing is, once you know that, you know the major scale, all of the major scales, every single one of them. How many are there? There's about 12. So, to keep this super simple, our major scale, like I just played on A. Starting on the fifth, we've got five, seven, four, five, seven on our A string, and then our D string, four, six, seven. And that is it. That is the whole major scale. Why is it good to know that? Because when you know that major scale, you know all of the notes that are in that key, as long as you know what the notes are. So let's learn the notes, that's the next important thing, right? We now know the major scale, that's the bedrock for all of music theory. What do we need to learn next? We need to learn the accidentals, as they are called, at least that's how I've known them. And the way to learn those, I'll go back to my B cam here again, is to learn the notes in between the notes. What do I mean by that? I mean that when I play my open E string, down here nice and low, my next note is an F, that's, that's basic in the, uh, in the alphabet, E, F. But this note is not G. Why is that? It's because we have sharps and flats. So this is where it gets maybe a little bit complicated, but don't overthink it. It's not as hard as it sounds. Let's get into it here. So we've got E, F. If we skip the second fret and go to the third fret, we've got G. Skip the next fret, go to fifth, A. Skip another fret, go to the seventh, B. Go a half step up, that is one fret up, to 8, C, go up another whole step, that's two frets, 1, 2, D, and then another whole step up to the 12, and we're back at E. Those are the ones that it's really important to know right now, because if you know those, then you can figure out the ones in between. The only notes that do not have a sharp or a flat between them, there are two instances of that, and that would be here on our open E. Our first fret is F. It's not E sharp, and it's not F flat. It's just E to F. That's great. That means that's one less sharp or flat that we have to remember. The other one being here. We've got our B to C. Or here. B to C. And those are the two that don't have a sharp or a flat between them. That is great. Like I said, now that's two separate groups of notes that we don't need to remember the sharps or flats between. How do we determine if something is sharp or flat? That's another really common question, and it's a question that I had, and a lot of people do if they're just learning how to play music. Uh, it's really the direction that you're moving. So as we ascend up the scale, if we're playing from E to F, if we're gonna play the second fret here, 
that's going to be an F sharp. It is also a G flat, but when we're moving E, F, sharp, G, so I'm playing open, one, two, three. The reason that that's called an F sharp is because we're ascending up. We're moving up in pitch. If we're moving down in pitch, if I start on the G, on the third fret, and then I go down to the second, now it's going to be a G flat. And then F, and then back to E. And those rules apply across the board. So that makes it nice and easy, right? So now we know our major scale. We know the musical alphabet. What will we do then with that? Well, this is where I'm going to start. Most of the time when we instruct music, um, especially in the beginning, we learn everything based on the C major scale. So we're going to play that here, starting from our A string on the third fret, C, D on the fifth, E, D string on the second fret. Third fret on the D string is F, fifth is G, A there on the second fret of the G string. Sorry. There we go, fourth fret on that G string. So we've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then we end up at C again. So that is our C major scale. Why is it great to know that? Because there's no sharps and flats in C major, which makes it awesome. There's also no uh, flats or sharps in A minor, which is the same scale moved uh, starting from a different note, but we'll talk about that a bit uh, later on when we get a bit more into the circle of fifths and um, relative minors and stuff like that. So for now, just you know, keep that in the back of your head, but it's not necessarily important where we're at right now. So no sharps or flats in C major. Why is that awesome? Because we don't have to remember any of the in-between accidental notes. Uh, we don't need to remember that the third chord is a sharp or a flat. It's just what it is. It's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That is great news for us. So now that we know all of the notes in C major, what's the next thing that's really awesome to know? Our, the good thing to know about that is the chord values that go along with that scale. So we've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Those are also the root names of all of the chords in that key. So in C, our one, or our root note, is going to be C major. Now it's a really easy way to remember what chords are major and minor in the major key is this. Your one, your four and your five are all major. So that's your C. So C, D, E, F being our fourth, also major. C, D, E, F, G, that is your fifth, also major. What that then means is that your two, three, and six are minor. So C, D is minor. C, D, E, E also minor. I'll play that version of E minor because it's easier. C, D, E. So we've got, now we know F and G are major. That is A minor. And the only one that doesn't fit into that is the diminished chord, which is our seventh. So what is our diminished chord in the scale? Well, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So our B is a diminished chord, which would be played something like this. Uh, let's see. Now, I won't ask you to remember the diminished chords, and honestly, we don't use them that often. Um, you might use them in jazz sometimes. Uh, your diminished chords, you're not going to play them very often, and they're not necessarily the most important to remember, but if you can remember, 1, 4, and 5 are major, 2, 3, and 6 are minor. When you're playing a major key, you're going to have a much easier time. And that is it for major keys, honestly. So you know the musical alphabet, you know how to play through Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. At your major scale, and now you know that when you play through that, all of those notes are then going to be either major or minor dependent on which scale degree they're on. So that's how we think about these, and this is uh, another great way of thinking about music theory. Instead of thinking about the specific notes in that key, what I like to do, and this has made it really easy for me, is you think about them as a number. Uh, this is also called the Nashville number system. So instead of thinking about C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, we're just thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then our octave. So if someone says they want you to play a one, four, five in C, that means you're playing C major, F major, G major. 
nice and easy, right? So it might take some time to internalize that and learn it, but it is perfectly acceptable to take some time and practice, and that's what I would do. So what I tend to do when I'm practicing all of my major keys is I'm going to go through, I'm going to play C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then I'm going to go up one string to the third fret of my E string here. I'm going to play the exact same pattern. This is my G major scale. If I go to the fifth fret of the A string, that is my D major scale, I'll have the same exact pattern. Fifth fret of the E string is our A major scale. And then if we jump up here, so we had D here, now we have our E major scale on the seventh fret of the D string. And then if I jump up here, seventh fret of my E string, I had A here, B. And you can keep going up like that and play through all of the major scales. And that's a great lesson. So if that was helpful to you guys, I would appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. I'm going to make some more lessons on music theory, and it would be fantastic to see you guys coming back. Let me know if this was helpful, and until next time, I've been Mason, this is PNW Guitar, and I will catch you next time.